Lord be with you. Welcome to our service on this holy Easter day. What a, a beautiful morning. And we had a, a lovely gathering of people this morning up on Clark's Hill. And a beautiful breakfast downstairs. And we come together now again to worship. I want to thank those who helped prepare the breakfast this morning for us, members of the choir. It's very appreciated. And I want to thank those who did the lovely decorating in our sanctuary. Yesterday we had a, a craft day at Centerville Church. We had about eight kids come and, and do crafts and lots of adults. And it was a really good morning. We had um, the opportunity to sort of work one-on-one -on -one with the boys and girls. And it was, uh, it was really nice. I want to thank everyone involved in making that special. We then now make the Easter proclamation throughout Lent. We have extinguished a light each week on our Lenten candle. As you see today, they've all been relit, with the exception of the Christ candle, which we will light in a few moments. Wendy will lead us in this liturgy. The light which the world tried to extinguish cannot be put out. Today we light the candles again, proclaiming the transforming power of God. As the light returns, we give thanks that God's transforming love has been, is now, and will ever be at work within us. Today, we celebrate new life, new joy, new possibilities. Christ is alive and living among us. As we light the candles, we acknowledge that there is still pain and suffering in the world, but we place our trust in God and in the way shown by Jesus Christ. In the midst of darkness, there is light. In the pain of death, there is life. In the face of what appears to us to be overwhelming odds, God is at work in us and in the world, working for justice and peace, compassion and love, and life abundant. Christ is risen. Christ is risen in us. For wherever we gather in his name, he is there. And together we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And with that refrain, we respond with the singing of our opening hymn, The Day of Resurrection, 164, in your red hymn book where the words are on the screen. Even the obstacle of death has been removed between us and God. 
If death no longer stands in our way, we can be certain that our sin does not either. Let us confess our sins that they may re be removed by the mercy of our risen Lord. Let us pray together the words of the prayer of confession, saying, Risen Lord, we have seen the empty tomb, and yet we sometimes act as if we have seen nothing. Why do we continue to be afraid and live in fear of death? You have defeated death. This is a glorious day of myrrh and song. Not just on this day, but all days. Fill our hearts with your resurrection promise of life, that we might tell this glad story, that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. This we pray in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear the good news of the Gospel. The tomb is empty. Our Lord and Savior has risen from the grave. That which has been dead is alive. No barrier, none whatsoever, can keep us from the love of God. Our sins are all forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. We're so pleased to have boys and girls, the boys and girls with us this morning. If they'd like to gather up here, we're going to have a little Easter chat. It's good to have Richard and Iris with us this morning as well. We can. There's a little room over here. Oh, you have George? Place to pack it's me. wonderful to see so many boys and girls. Just wonderful to see. Okay. So to get us started this morning, I'm going to make a couple of sounds, and then a couple other people are going to make some sounds. And we'll, the rest of us have to sort of see if we can identify what those sounds are. Okay? Here we go. No. Kitty. Okay. What about dog? Dog? Everybody hear the dog? Dog? Ooh. Cow. Cow. Okay. We got agreement on both sides of the bench. Good. Okay. Let me think of another one. Uh, George, do you have one? Snake. 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 Ava, do you have one? Did you hear that? Wolf. Can you do it again? Wolf. That's right. Is it a wolf? It's a wolf. Right. Okay. Girls, do you have come off the phone? Do you have one, Richard? Yes. Hmm. Any idea? Bee, a yes. bee, a bee, of course. A bee. Mm -hmm. bee. Charlotte? Owl? Yeah. Good for you. Do you have one iris too? I see. A bunny rabbit? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, we got some great sounds here this morning. Now, here's a question. How did you know that was a rabbit or a bee or a cat or a cow? How did you know? I know you two know. Anybody else know? Anybody besides Richard? How do you know, Richard? How did you recognize? How did you know? Because because I learned this because I learned what sounds animals make, so I can identify the sounds. You can identify because you're familiar with those sounds, right? Familiar with those sounds, and so you can identify what they are. What's going on today? What's special about today? It's a very special day. What's happening? What's happening? Oh, we, we got some really keen ideas here. I know. Iris. It's Easter. What does that mean? What does Easter mean? All right, Charlotte, can you tell us? What does Easter mean? What does it mean? 
On Good Friday, we gathered here, and what happens to Jesus on Good Friday? We'll start with Good Friday. Richard? We celebrate his death day. Okay. He is, yeah, he's, he's put to death on the cross. He's crucified, and he's buried in the tomb. The stone is put over his grave. Done. Then, it's now Sunday, Easter Sunday. And something's different about his grave. When they go to visit his grave today, something's really different. Something's happened. What is it? What's happened? What happened? Easter Sunday morning when Mary went to the grave, something was really different. What happened? He was what? He rose from the dead. You're right. The stone that held him shut in the grave was not was open, and he was no longer in there. Were you going to say something more to that, Richard? It's like you guys see the exact same thing. The exact same thing. All right. He rose from the grave. He defeated death. And when we read from the book of John, we hear the story of Mary going to Jesus' grave on that at that morning, three days later, Easter morning, and she finds that the grave is open and Jesus isn't there. And in a little while, a man stands before Jesus and Mary doesn't recognize him. And in all of the Bible accounts, Jesus isn't recognized at first. So maybe his, his face, he looks a little different than what he did before he died. We don't know for sure. But this person speaks to Mary and Mary doesn't recognize him at first. But then Jesus says something. Any idea what it is? Jesus says something. And like the cat and the, the cow and the owl, it's familiar to her. What does, what does Jesus say? Mary. And just the way he says her name, she instantly knew it was Jesus. Because the way he said her name was familiar to her. It was the way he said her name that, he, that she recognized and knew right away that it was Jesus. She was familiar with his name, with the way she, he said her name, familiar. She recognized him the way he said her name. Isn't that special? And as we become more familiar with the, the stories of the Bible and the Easter story, um, that is a good thing too, because we can, we can talk about those stories of the Bible and of Jesus and how they fit into our lives as well. We want to now join our voices together in the Lord's Prayer, because now we can say that Lord's Prayer together. So any of you who would like to come up here and say it with me, and then the people watching from home can also see, see your wonderful faces this morning and saying it with us together. So if you'd like to come up here, come on up. If you'd like to stay where you are, that's fine. I know Elizabeth wants to come up and help. Charlotte, are you coming? Okay. Uh, okay, come on. So everyone, every, all of you, come up here, and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Come on up here. Here we go. That's it. Let us all join our voices together in our Lord's Prayer. We begin, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Very well done. Now, this next song is a, is a really happy song. Do you, when you're happy, do you stand still? Do you kind of move around and jiggle around? Well, this song is about dancing. I danced in the morning. It's, it's about Jesus talking about him and how he, what he went through. And then he danced in the morning on Easter morning. And here he was with us again in spirit. 
I danced in the morning. So you might want to step back over here so you can see the words, but feel free to, to dance around too. And I think our congregation needs to stand and sing this one too. We have to move when we sing. If you lump dance, believe that you just you know, dance around. I danced in the morning, 352 in your random book where the words are on the screen. All right. Do you want to be done in
and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Let us pray. Spirit of power and new possibility, open our minds to understanding, our hearts to loving, and our wills to carrying out the mission of the risen Christ, who is God's living word. And may these thoughts and words speak your truth in love today. In Christ our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Our Good Friday service held here on, on Friday with uh, Centerville and, and, and uh, Selby. A number of people were here and the dominant color that people were wearing was black. When we turn in John's Gospel and travel with Mary this morning, we go with her while it is still dark. <coughs> This is important, obviously, because it is early in the morning that she travels. She's probably restless, reviewing everything over and over in her mind that has happened to Jesus. And she just wants to go to his grave. And going in the darkness is also how we get to Easter. 
We must go through the darkness of Good Friday. We must experience the injustice and brutality of the cross, the burial and the stone blocking the grave. We must do this before we, we can return on the third day while it is still dark. Many of us gathered on the hill this morning. It wasn't quite dark outside, but our eyes may have been still partly shut, making it seem as though it was still darkness. We gathered early to embrace and welcome this holy Easter day and the hope and the joy that it offers and brings to our lives. Going back to John's Gospel, John's Gospel stands apart from the other synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and the resurrection story is, is no exception to that. John's Gospel was written at a little different time and depicts Jesus' conversations and teachings on theological matters at a different, uh, greater length, and his approach, and we approach his ministry in a, in a little different way. The resurrection story, we approach a little differently too. Mary arrives at the tomb to find the stone rolled away, so she turns and she runs to Simon Peter and to the other disciple that Jesus loved. And she told them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. So, so, so far here, do you hear any trumpets blazing or any stops on the organ pulled out either? There's maybe a, a slight melody playing in the background, but, but, but no vibratos or crescendos or hallelujahs. In fact, no one is overcome or jumping up and down with Easter joy. More so far of a kind of a head scratching and a running back and forth kind of an atmosphere with some gut-wrenching sorrow mixed in. Most of John chapter 20 is more of a matter-of-fact, restrained, subdued story. Why is this? This is the, the most sacred, holy story in the Bible. And John has not missed the magnitude of that empty tomb and the wonder and the joy of Jesus' resurrection. But John shapes this sacred story in a fashion to allow the trumpets and the organs to sing elsewhere. We continue. So let's take note of the story as it unfolds so John's, in John's narration. In the darkness, Mary makes her way to Jesus' tomb. What was she going there to do? Why was she going there? She couldn't enter the tomb. The stone had sealed his grave. Maybe she just wanted to be near where he had been laid to rest. Haven't we all done that? We've come to a grave to pay our respects, to stand, to, to remember, to offer prayer, just to be close. We can imagine how Mary is feeling today. A swirling of, of emotions and memories. What if you were to go to the cemetery and find a, a fresh mound of soil and a gaping hole? Wouldn't you immediately suspect grave robbery? Jesus was buried in a tomb sealed with a stone, but now the stone is rolled away. How could this be? The grave was open. Grave robbery. Somebody has tampered with his grave by opening the entrance and taking his body away. For what purpose? For what badly chosen inept reason would they do that? It's obvious to Mary what has happened, so she runs for help. And her friends Peter and the other disciple run and follow with her to see what she has seen. Everyone is running. And Jesus cannot be found inside or outside the tomb, and all that's left in the tomb is his burial wrappings neatly folded in place. I still remember as a teenager, the family had, had been away somewhere, and we'd come home late in the afternoon while it was still light. And, um, 
as we were making our way into the house, we noticed a book and some uh, doilies or uh, table cloth runners on the ground. And as we drew closer to the house, we noticed things a little more in, in disarray. And when we, we got to the house door, it was ajar. We proceeded in and saw things tossed and, and our, some of our furniture in our front living room was gone. The point of this side sideline story is that they, thieves are not neat. They grab and go, leaving a trail of disarray, being quick as possible to avoid being seen or, or caught. Thieves, no matter what they steal, they don't tidy up, usually after themselves. They don't fold the clothes. They don't you know, rehang the curtains. Remember when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead? He stood before his open grave and he commanded Lazarus to come out. And the man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, his face wrapped with a cloth, and Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. In other words, release him from his grave clothes and set him free. There was no direction to fold the clothes before he went. In verse 8, it tells us that when they reached the grave, the other disciple believed. What did he believe? Because what follows in verse 9 is the fact that they did not understand what was happening. They did not know what was, what was going on. But something interesting was happening. Whatever is going on with Jesus and in the minds of the three, the men decide to return home. Maybe take some time to think about this. In any event, whatever timid conclusions the two disciples drew at that moment, they simply returned home. Again, no trumpets. Isn't it this the most important of all Bible stories? No one single emotion has been described thus far. We're not told that they were happy or sad or confused or ecstatic or inquisitive or, or curious or oddly disinterested. Nothing. They went home. They don't ask Mary if she's coming or offer to see, to see how she is. They just kind of mutely walk away and leave Mary alone now to weep in the garden. And Mary wept. And darkness persists, maybe not so much in the sky, but in Mary's heart for certain. The very first emotion we have mentioned up here is one of sorrow. She's crying and her eyes are, are wet with tears. And this is where Easter begins. Easter begins in the sorrow and this darkness and the confusion and the shadow of death. Easter begins here. It begins. It doesn't end. It begins. Our Lord is changed in some way, transformed in, in, a, in a new mode of resurrection life. And at least one effect of this change is found in all four Gospels. As Jesus' physical form was not just the same as it was before. A New Testament scholar Michael Welker once pointed out, when you read the post-resurrection accounts in the Gospels, you don't find anyone seeing Jesus instantly and recognizing exactly who he is and then rushing over to him to say, Jesus, hey, welcome back. Jesus showed his, his scars to prove that they were real and that, that there were really was continuity between the Jesus who had died on the cross and the one who had stood before them after Easter. In fact, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus standing in the midst of his disciples, Jesus looked different enough that some doubted it was him. Now Mary looks right at Jesus, but at first glance, 
she thinks he is a stranger. But when he speaks her name in exactly the same way he'd said it, who knows how many times before, she realizes who it is standing before her. Mary Magdalene is then told by Jesus to go and share the good news. Mary Magdalene, the first evangelist in Jesus' risen presence. And she fulfills that sacred duty gladly. Easter doesn't so much burst onto the scene in John's Gospel as it creeps onto the scene, emerging from the darkness and the confusion, from the grief and the loss and sadness. John's retelling of Jesus' resurrection bears all the marks of, of an authentic retelling of what really happened that day. No one actually witnessed Jesus emerging from the tomb, so John doesn't pretend to see it. John could have added the alleluias and the trumpets, but he didn't. Instead, he gave us the more stark and sober account, genuine account. John's telling of this sacred story fits our world and our lives into it. Easter in John emerges from the darkness of death, the shadows of confusion, and the sorrows of this distressing world. And this is precisely where we need Easter to be today, too. Easter still proceeds up on, up on us in the darkness. Easter comes for those who, like Mary, find themselves hurting, grieving, struggling, lost, crying. The triumph of God's life is real. Jesus lives. It is finally life and not death that has the last, the finest, and the most glorious word of all. And we serve a risen Savior who is worthy of every alleluia that we can muster this morning and every day. But we do not forget that the gospel of the good news emerges from the shadows of the real world in which we live. Death, darkness, and sadness are the background of Easter. Death is Easter's precursor, not just in the sense that Jesus had to die before he could be resurrected, but death is Easter's precursor in also the wider sense that Easter's light shines the more brightly, specifically because it finds us in the very shadowlands and recesses of our lives. John gives us an Easter that fits us. John gives us an Easter that can go back home with you. Because, you see, if Easter's joy and declaration needed all the fanfare and the trumpets and the white banners, how long would we last? Not many among us likely you know, sing the hallelujah chorus at the end of a great day. But there are many people who get up while it is still dark, unsure they can outrun the shadows of dimness and darkness of their lives during the balance of their day. That's where the Easter light shines through. That's why John gives us good news that we can live by and also live with. We now know with certainty that somewhere in the shadows of our lives, a truly risen Savior is there, bursting with new life and hope and faith and peace. Darkness remains in this world and will come to our lives again and again. But the truth of Easter is there to greet the dark shadows head on. He's here now and he knows your name. No matter how deep the darkness of your life may seem, he's with you. His voice is calling your name. His resurrection means there is a future full of hope for all believers. He is the light in any darkness. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. Amen. Amen.
and in response to that news, let us join in singing about this day. Welcome, happy morning. It's 161 in your hymn book, the red hymn book, where the words are on the screen. Easter Day, we celebrate God's most precious gift to us in Christ dying and his rising. As we present our gifts to God this morning, may our generosity reflect God's goodness and the hope we have in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Our offerings will now be received.
generous God, this day we recognize how much you've given us in Christ Jesus and what that gift has cost. Bless these gifts, for they may offer the hope and joy we feel today to the world you love so dearly. In the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We have the opportunity to pause and worship and to come before our Lord in our thoughts and our prayers, praying for others who maybe are struggling or feeling lost or confused, whatever the case may be, we will have the opportunity to share those, those names, the ones on our prayer list and the ones in your hearts today. When you hear God in your mercy, you are invited to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of power and possibility, you broke open the tomb that held our Lord. We pray that you break into your church where your people are distracted or quarreling, quarreling, discouraging results or divisions or grudges or holding back new ideas or just holding back change. May your spirit be present in all these situations of your church. Resurrect, renew, and revive your church, we pray that it may continue to be faithful to you and, and to your leading. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection and new life, you broke into the hearts of Jesus' fearful friends. Now break into the, our relationships with one another, where they are vibrant and life-giving and going well. We pray that you continue to nurture them where they are strained by old hurts and misunderstandings or carelessly taken for granted, we ask that you help us to mend them. Resurrect, renew, and revive, O oh Lord, our life together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of might and mercy, you broke the schemes of those who stood in the way of your love. Now break into the governing systems of your world. Stir the minds and hearts of leaders to work for justice and equitable sharing. Where laws are corrupt, where people suffer under harsh rule, call them into account. Resurrect, renew, and revive the leaders of this your world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and of hope, you broke the bonds of death which tried to shackle new life. Now break into situations of illness, struggle, pain, grief, and loss. Wherever people are, are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Wherever someone mourns the loss of any relationship or any dream, Bring your healing grace. We include our prayers for Dolly and Alan, for Ralph M, Lane and Mike, Sharon and Dawn, Jack and Rosemary. We include our prayers for Jane, Lucas, John, Beth, Jean, Jamie, Norma, Jean, Nancy, Shailen, Georgia, Bill, David, Norma, and Dawn B. And we include the names and situations on our hearts this morning. Resurrect, renew, and revive our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of Easter, renewal, and resurrection, you have broken into our lives again this day. 
We give you thanks for the power of your love to remake every situation that brings us challenge or choice. Break into all our moments of celebration and joy as well. Give us gratitude. Help us to recognize and acknowledge our blessings, how blessed we are. Give us gratitude. Give us the impulse to share and a spirit of grace and understanding. Resurrect, renew, and revive, O oh Lord, your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, O Lord, we lay before you, offering them through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen and amen. To take us forth on this beautiful day, on this Easter Sunday, holy of holy days, we must say, Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. 155 in your red. And the disciples hope at news Jesus had risen to encourage you. 
And may God's resurrecting love open the future for you, empowered by the Spirit and embraced by Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ, your risen Savior, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.